Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'll be sharing two delicious and easy recipes with you, homemade pizza and vanilla pudding chocolate chip cookies. I'd like to thank Cuisamax for sponsoring today's video. I'll be making these two recipes using their stand mixer and I'm really, really excited to share this with you. Here is the box. I have not yet opened it. I just wanted to show you some of the features that the box says that it has on it. So here's the stand mixer. Here's what it looks like. They do have this in several different colors. I chose this light kind of turquoisey tealish blue. It's a really pretty color. This is a five quart stainless steel mixer, which I prefer the stainless steel over the glass because one, I feel like it's less likely to get broken. <laughs> but two, I also like that I can put this into my freezer if I'm making whipped cream to help the whipped cream whip up uh, a lot faster. So here's the mixer out of the box. This is everything that it came with. You have the mixer and then it also has this splatter shield with this spout that you can put like flour and things in so that it doesn't fly everywhere on you. It also comes with a whisk attachment. It comes with a dough hook and it comes with a paddle. And then on the side here, you have two buttons. This top button just tilts the head of the mixer up or down. And then the second button there, it adjusts the speed of the mixer. So you have minimum, medium, and then you have a maximum speed. In addition to the dough hook and the paddle, it came with this little spatula that you could use to scrape the bowl down. It came with this little thing for a free gift and then an instruction manual and then information on how to register your product for the warranty. First up, I'm going to make a pulled pork pizza. I'm going to start out by making a homemade pizza dough. The first time I made homemade pizza dough was about a year and a half ago, and the recipe that I had wasn't very specific on the instructions, and I didn't have any sort of a stand mixer. So I was just trying to, you know, figure it out and do it by hand, and the pizza crust really didn't turn out that well. I've seen Caitlin over on Living That Mama Life make this pizza dough many times on her channel and she swears by it. So as soon as I knew that I was getting this stand mixer, I wanted to give this a try. I'm so glad that I did. It turned out perfectly. It was so easy to do. Let me show you how I made it. Here are the ingredients that you'll need. You'll need some flour. I'm using all-purpose. I know Caitlin has said that she likes to use half all-purpose flour and then half whole wheat flour. You'll need olive oil, salt, some warm water, and then some rapid rise yeast. And I forgot to mention this, but I'll be sure to link Caitlin's video in the description box below so you can check that out for the exact measurements. So to get started in the mixing bowl, I'm going to add in the warm water. Then I'm going to add in the yeast. I'm going to take a fork and stir that around a little bit. And then I'm going to allow this to sit for about five minutes. And you should see it starting to bubble up. Once that's nice and foamy, I'm going to add in the salt. Then the olive oil. Next, I'm going to add the flour. I started out by adding half the amount of flour that the recipe calls for. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but like I mentioned earlier, I've only made homemade pizza dough one other time and it did not turn out well. I think I added way too much flour and I was nervous I was going to do it again. So I ended up starting with just half. I do go in later, you'll see me add the other half, but I'm going to add the flour and then add on the dough hook. And as you can see, the dough hook went on really easily. I'm then going to turn the mixer on to the lowest speed and allow that to turn for a few few seconds and then I'm going to turn it up to about halfway between the lowest speed and the second to lowest speed. Here I'm adding the remaining cup of flour. I'm going to then lower the mixer and turn that back on and allow that to mix for a couple moments. Here is the dough. You can see it's still pretty loose so I'm going to add another quarter cup of flour. You can add flour if you need it but I would do it slowly a quarter cup at a time that way you don't add too much. So after I've added a quarter cup here's what the dough looks like. As you can see it's pulling away from the sides and from the bottom. I'm going to turn the mixer on about medium speed and just knead that for a couple minutes. After it's kneaded for a couple minutes, as you can see, I'm touching the dough and my fingers are bouncing right off of it. I'm going to remove the pizza dough from the dough hook. And then in this large mixing bowl, I'm going to add some olive oil and using my hands, I'm just going to spread the olive oil around the bowl so that the dough doesn't stick as it rises. I'm going to add the dough ball into the olive oil that's in the bowl and just toss it around so it gets covered with the olive oil. I'm then going to cover this with a clean kitchen cloth and then set this in a warm place and allow it to rise for about an hour or until it has doubled in size. 
After an hour, I'm going to remove the towel and then punch down the dough a little bit. I'm then going to take some cooking spray and spray my pizza pan. You could also use some olive oil if you'd prefer. I'm going to place the dough ball onto the pizza pan and then using my clean hands, I'm just going to spread that out. You could also use a rolling pin if you'd like. Now with the pizza, you can really top it with anything you'd like. I have some leftover pulled pork, so that's what I'm going to use tonight. So for the base, I'm going to use some of the Sticky Fingers Memphis style barbecue sauce. I'm just going to add some of that and then using a spoon, I'm going to spread that out. And then I'm going to add a layer of shredded mozzarella cheese. Then I'm going to add the pulled pork. You could, of course, use homemade if you have it. This is from Sam's Club. It's the member's mark. We love this. It's so good. And I had leftovers that I put in the freezer. And so to make this pizza, I just pulled it out and thawed it. So I'm just going to put that on the pizza. And then I decided to add some bacon pieces. You could, of course, cook up some real bacon. That would be delicious. But to make it easy, I'm just using these bacon pieces from Walmart. Then I'm going to add some pineapple. I know pineapple is controversial. A lot of people swear it doesn't belong in a pizza. I am not one of those people. I love pineapple my pizza so I'm going to add some of the uh, pineapple these are just some rings that's what I happen to have on hand I'm just going to tear those up and add that and then a little more cheese never hurts right so I'm going to add a little shredded cheddar cheese and then a little bit more mozzarella and then I'm going to take that barbecue sauce and add just a little drizzle just to make it kind of pretty and then I'm going to pop this into the oven and bake this for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it is golden brown and the crust is cooked all the way through this next step is optional. You don't have to do this, but I've seen Caitlin at Living That Mama Life do this a lot. She likes to add butter to the crust of the pizza. She says that it adds good flavor and it makes it a little bit more soft, and I have to agree. I liked it, and my husband did as well, so I'm going to try to remember to do that from here on out when I make homemade pizza. Here's the finished pizza. I did add just a little bit of cilantro just as a garnish. If you're a cilantro hater, you can totally skip that step. I just wanted to add a little bit of green. Here is the finished pizza. This was so, so good. I was so worried that it was going to turn out awful like the last time I made pizza crust, but I feel like between this recipe and the stand mixer, it made it really easy. This was delicious. Next up, our vanilla pudding chocolate chip cookies. I've mentioned this before on my channel, but I am not a big chocolate chip cookie fan, but I actually enjoy these. These are really good. Here are the ingredients that you'll need. You'll need some vanilla pudding mix baking soda, chocolate chips, all-purpose flour, some granulated sugar, some brown sugar, some salt, you'll need some vanilla extract, butter, and eggs. To get started, I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees. In the small mixing bowl, I'm going to add in the dry ingredients. So I'm going to add my flour, baking soda, and salt. The recipe says to sift that, and you can do that. Usually I do, but I just didn't feel like pulling out the sifter for this. So I'm just going to use a whisk and whisk that until it's well combined. It basically does the same thing. You're just wanting to get the lumps out and add a little bit of air to that. So I'm going to set that aside. And then in the stand mixer, I'm going to add in my butter. Now this butter is melted so I'm going to add that in there and then add in my sugars for this recipe I'm going to use the paddle attachment this was really easy to put on and you'll see me this was the first time I'd use this so I kind of tug on it a little bit just to make sure it's really secure and it was really secure and like I said it was easy to put on there and this paddle attachment is great for cookie batters or cake batters so once I've added my sugars I'm going to add my pudding mix and then I'm going to lower the stand mixer and turn this on now you want to start out on a low speed so I've started this out on the lowest and then after a couple seconds I will go up to about medium speed for this then I'm going to add in my vanilla and allow that to continue to mix then I'm going to add my egg once that's mixed together I'm going to add in the flour now you could totally use the splatter shield and spout for this that would be really easy but with this being my first time using it I kind of wanted to be able to really see in there and see what the mixer was doing and how it was mixing everything together so at this point I'm going to scrape down the bowl using the spatula that they included I really didn't actually have to scrape anything down I was concerned that the paddle wouldn't get to the bottom of the bowl but it really did there wasn't any flour or anything that needed to be mixed in so you want to make sure you don't over work your dough so at this point I'm going to add in my chocolate chips and as you can see I goofed up and poured like the whole container of chocolate chips in it so it had a little more than the recipe called for but you know whatever more chocolate won't hurt right so at this point this is what the dough looks like 
The recipe says that you can refrigerate this for about 30 minutes or up to a day or so. Sometimes I refrigerate it, sometimes I don't. It really just depends on your preference. Today, I did pop this into the refrigerator again just for 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, I'm going to scoop this out onto my cookie sheet. I like to use this little cookie scoop. I'm going to spray the cookie sheet and then place the cookie dough onto the cookie sheet. If you don't have a scoop like this, no worries. Just use a rounded tablespoon. These are going to go into the oven. Again, it's preheated to 300. 150 degrees and these cooked for about 8 to 12 minutes or until the edges just start to get slightly golden brown and you do want to make sure that you place the cookie dough a couple inches apart. Once these are done this is what they look like. You'll want to allow them to cool on the cookie sheet for about 10 minutes then transfer them to a wire rack and allow them to cool completely. And here are the finished cookies. These were really yummy. We had lots of cookies left over, so we went and took them to a couple of our neighbors, and they loved them. One of the ladies actually texted me and asked me for the recipe because she loved them so much and could not wait to make them. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And again, if you're interested in the stand mixer or any other of the items that Cuisamax has, I'll make sure to link their website in the description box below and include my coupon code. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.